down on his luck His pockets are near empty He's sleeping in his truck The rodeo next Friday His bills are past due How will pay for rentries He ain't got a clue He's a cowboy It's his turn to ride Praise for eight seconds when they shout outside. His future is uncertain, his past he can't forget. He's just a hard luck cowboy, life hasn't broken yet. Welcome back, True Horse Horsemanship. Here we got a uh, three-year-old, well, he's actually three-and-a-half-year-old Charlie. So, last time we saw, the first time we saw him was in the round pen. And was that the first ride hunt or not? I thought it was. Yeah, so y'all got to see his first ride. Now, before I start, there's a couple points I like to pick to uh, point out one thing with Charlie if he was a short quarter horse different confirmation I'd be pushing him a little bit harder but he's he's already grown since he's been here and he's gonna get to be a tall boy so uh, I really got to pay attention because I don't want to you know Make it make me look good. I'm not gonna break him down. There's enough of that going around. So my our objective with Wolf Trap Farms and me is have the stud be able to last a lot of years, healthy, and be able to do a lot of stuff. And uh, so here's a prime example. One day I was riding him in the having him pulled out here to the ring, I was riding him in a round pen and just at a walk I was working on a stop and his feel and everything and I asked for a stop with my body and he did a hard one even at a walk and he dropped down on the hind end because he's so lanky he's like riding two horses at times and some days I feel like I'm riding downhill then a couple days he'll straighten out it's amazing how fast some of these horses actually grow. So you'll be able, you know, ex really excited about Charlie here because y'all going to be able to see his progress all the way through and probably a couple years down the road. Uh, just some uh, footnotes on him. He's been going back and forth, bringing the mare and uh, plus weather. So. You know, I have been putting some decent time in them, but not as much time as I really would like. But, you know, at his age, he can use them a few days off that he gets. Now, I'm going to, basically what I'll be working on today, be a recap of the first ride, because I do this every time, especially with him. I really want to develop that mouth. I want him to learn to get to the feel and everything. And one thing... I like to y'all listen to I'm going to point out he's starting to give to the bit real nicely on vertical some days I just touch him and he comes right to my hands he's a stud so I got a couple mares down there some days we come down the hall and they're squirting at him and and I know that day he's not going to come to my hands as easy at the end of the training session he does now with him, because of his confirmation, I'm going to go back a step and break his training schedule in where I'm getting like two 20-minute rides out or 30-minute rides out instead of one hard training session during a day. So Bakes, who will be going through a lot of tips, you know, let's go back. I cannot push this enough about moving that hip 
you know, Charlie, if I'm not on him, he's going to come to me. You know, and I'll get that in the saddle. Right now, I'm just, I'm not lunging Charlie to wear him down because I'm not asking for a run. Now, some days I'll take him around pin. He's spaghetti legs at times, so I'll put him in the round pin, let him get underneath himself before I ride him. You know, it's only fair to him. But all I'm, I use my groundwork at this point to judge where his mind's at. I mean, he's on me. He'll give little instances where he's asking what I want. Especially right there, he's looking at me like, do you want me to go forward? Because he saw me getting ready to go in neutral. And that's what I'm going to point out again. You know, you start these horses out right, you don't have to do the exaggerated points. I mean, Charlie's is a good example. He'll start looking for me to see what I'm doing. And if I start relaxing, He's going to go in the neutral and disengage. I point, and then he'll leave off. You don't have to do all that fancy gimmick stuff that, you know, it's just unreal. And I've said in the past, what ends up happening, you start training that natural instinct out of the horse. I mean, and this is, a, like I said, a young stud, and he is covering mares, so yeah, at some point, hopefully, well, we're supposed to have rain a lot this week, but maybe next weekend I can have Cindy in here and start riding with little one, if she's up to it. But anyway, so I'm going to go back talking about the importance of moving the hip. Uh, somebody asked me to do a video on side pass. So what I'm going to go through today is how with him, how just moving that hip, getting him uh, what I call raining, going with the feel of his mouth. If I say one way or he goes that way, how that will come to play. So this will be a lot of information in this video. And also, you notice behind me, I used to use cones for this, but... I started using my poles, and I really like poles for this exercise, especially with uh, novice people and green horses. They got something more visual, and it sort of helps them stop looking at the horse's head and everything else, because I try when they, and I'll explain when I get up there, and that's what I've been doing with him. And today, I have tried them one way, but I haven't tried them the other way. Hopefully, we'll get the trot in the other way so we got a lot to cover today yeah there's some I want to address real quick it don't even have nothing to do with me and somebody else that put stuff on YouTube People, and people, if you want to put something on YouTube, I try, and once in a while I forget, but I try to put a backstory on it. In other words, you know, so you really get the full idea of what that horse is about. So if you want to make videos, always make sure you do that. So that way, you know, when people start hand packing and you can say hey I told you this is the way this horse you know I said in the video this is the way the horse is but anyhow everybody started, somebody put it on true to horse on Facebook and people start net ticking number one we don't have no history of that horse and the guy didn't do anything wrong I mean not really he just to me should have had a longer line and um, he's a mouthy little thing and also back girth but whatever his reason that that if that's his thing that's his thing but everybody's getting on him for this or that and such and I'm thinking the horse started coming on top of him so he got 
in the horse's face with a flag, keep the horse off of them. Which I would have done the same thing. And everybody said it should have took slower. Well, you know, some of these horses, they can get everything. But no matter how slow you go, when it comes to a certain time, they're going to give you a fit. I mean, horses can be silly at times. So, you know, there was nothing. The guy wasn't hurting the horse and nothing. He should have, like I said, and what, to me, I was looking at positive things. Number one, he didn't let the horse buck it out. He tried to get control of that horse's feet. And somebody said he didn't have no control. Well, it's a different situation. And you get a horse working back and forth as nice as Charlie just did. But that first time you put that saddle on, you're liable, they'll act, they're gonna ask stupid. So before you start judging these guys, stop and think, you know. And people, if you want to put videos out there, Number one, you better get thick skin. And number two, give a backstory. Like I said, so enough of that. Just, the poor fella just got slammed when he shouldn't have got slammed. So, as a matter of fact, he had a haircut sort of like mine. So I sort of <laughs> went along with that. Anyhow, so back to Charlie. And by the way, Charlie's barn name is Smokey Joe too. So when we start, before I ask him to move off, I'm going to ask him to give to my, come to my hands. Now with Charlie, what I've been doing, I want to put my hands way up here. As soon as he gives to him, I'm going to release. Because the old adage is, higher the hands, the higher the head. I want to teach Charlie, no matter where my hands are, that's where his head should come down to my hand come down and somebody said well this is Ruka this is not Ruka whatever you pronounce it this is just getting that horse in frame getting used to that bit and I'll do my lateral stuff of course now Charlie some people say I never talked to a horse Charlie's one few horses You'll hear me kiss that, just because it works. So we're going to start here doing my little exercise. Now I've never tried them through this, but when I hit to a pole, I don't want to do a straight circle, I want to do a sharp turn. But when I pick up his head, I'm going to release it. I get way to about his hips there, I'm going to pick up. And when I feel that shoulder goes that way, I'm going to release it. Now, right coming down the straight, you saw me grab his mouth a little bit. But I'm not holding on to him. If you really watch my hands, I don't know if Cindy get a good close-up from that direction or not. But when I'm coming back through that, I'm going to make sure I release. I'm going to pick up, I release. Now at times it'll look like I'm holding him, but I'm still giving him a little bit of release. I want him to learn to follow that shoulder. Now what I, a lot of people do when they do that, they do this. You see what happens? And this is a green horse, so he ain't going to go with that. They come across that center line. The next the center line and they get away that horse right now he's a green horse and I want to teach him to go with that feel but I don't want a circle now look at that next pole right there he gets a little bit off track and I just touch I'll ask for a stop. Get my back. Then we go the other way. 
Uh, Charlie, like I said, we're going to trot him a little bit. So, I won't do this exercise at a trot until he learns to get under himself. But I got to set him up to succeed. I don't want to set him up to fail. Because the first time I go at these poles at a trot and we do it right, because I've done my homework, the better off we are, the better Charlie's off. I mean, this is a simple exercise. If you notice my outside rein, I'm not doing nothing with it. It's loose. And, you know, for trail horses, this is really good. There, that was nice. Oh. Ho, oh, oh. ho. So that's a good exercise. And, you know, he's, if he was a short, like I said earlier, shorter quarter horse, I'd be pushing a little bit harder on this. But, you know, I got to keep him. Right now, Charlie's at a stage he wants to help. I mean, he wants to please me. But if I push him too hard because, because of his physical build right now, him going through that spaghetti stage, as I call it. You know, he's liable to start getting uncomfortable and so and then he's not going to want to please. So, you know, the first ride he saw me working on him giving his hip. So we look at that hip, he gets. Now, if I use my outside leg, I can move that shoulder. Now look at that hip. Push pressure, say move that hip. Take my outside leg. Move that shoulder. See how all it comes from moving that hip. If I don't get him moving that hip softly like he's doing right now, I don't have him moving that shoulder. So now as he's walking, he'll move off my leg. I'm gonna pick up my rein, shorten my inside out my inside rein a little bit and move him over. I just rolled my spur. And I'm not asking, you know, I don't want perfect right now. But as he's moving, I'm going to gather and pick up my inside rein, look where I want. Then we walk off. So I'm going to go to change my directions here and go to the right. Now, like I said earlier, I plan on doing some trot work with them, basically for the first time. But see, I'm going through my steps right now to let him know I'm going to control his feet. So I'm going to shorten my outside rein there, put some spur on him. As soon as Roll that spur as soon as he I feel as soon as I feel his body go sideways, I take it off. Like I said, we're not looking for perfect right now. People say, well I have a hard time teaching my horse to half pass or side pass. If you teach him move that hip. This is Charlie's first time going to the right. Anyway, you teach him to move off that hip softly, then the rest of it's going to come easy. Because common sense tells you you're teaching him to move off that leg. And once he gets the idea to move off that pressure, Yeah, I want to do some serpentines here for a little bit. Once he learns how to move that pressure and move that hip, because see, when I move that hip, I'm using that for my setup to move that shoulder. So what I'll do, I'll move that hip, 
Move it. Move it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Right there. He put a lot of weight on that one foot. On his, uh, of course, you're all wondering what foot. He's put a lot of weight on his inside foot. I mean, outside foot. And then I can move that shoulder around. That was good. I got horses. You know, a lot of stuff I do, some people wouldn't do it. Like right now, I got horses trotting up here. And I'm on a green horse. So instead of getting his feet moving, I just sort of sit here and relax and act like, think in my head, nothing's going to happen. But be prepared. So like I said, you know, I can't stress how important moving that hip is. I mean, that's where all your movement's going to come from. Your lead changes, your taking the correct lead. It's all going to come from that hip. So we're just going to I'm on now, what a lot of people do wrong when they first ask a horse to try it off, they don't get prepared. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a little bit of contact in his mouth. And squeeze. Just going to let him move out. But I got a little bit of contact. Where I can control him. Good boy. And that's the way it's supposed to go. So now we're going to go to the other direction. But see, I just had a little bit of contact with him, so if something happens, I, well, with him, i got to be really careful how I do a one-ring stop. But I do a one-ring stop, or, you know, I taught him how to come to my hands and if you notice that a trot he got in nice position which is going to be more comfortable for him to trot because he's going to get more under himself and bring that back up a little bit but I'm not hanging on him when he hits that spot if he's in that sweet spot as I call it I'm just going to keep my hands there you watch my outside rain I might tighten it up a little bit but I still don't come across the center line I want him to stay what I call between my hands and my legs. I want to keep them shoulders up. And also when I asked him to trot, I didn't say, damn it, trot. I just kissed at him, squeezed a little harder, kissed at him again, squeezed a little harder. And then when he does the right thing, I let him go. I didn't quit squeezing. Now we haven't tried it at all this way, so all I want him get a little bit of contact. Look where I'm going. I'm going to help him out as much as I go. If I get too concerned about where his head's at, I'm going to lose him. So if I start doing this, he's going to be all over the place. So for me to help him out, I want to look where I want to go. Ooh. 
Go! Now with him, he has, most time when I ask for whoa, I want to go right into a bat. But with him, I give him a little bit of time to get under himself. Now right there, I ask, if I turn him on tight circle, the reason being, I know nobody probably saw it, I asked him to go to the right, go with that feel, and he didn't go with that feel. I want him to just go with that feel. I'll pick up. I'm going to hold it a little bit longer than I normally would. Go with that feel. I want him to just pick up and go with it. Go. Yeah, and a little exercise shows you, and all this stuff here, I'm telling you, a lot of horses could benefit. I got a spot horse fixing to go home. I hope I talked the owners in watching this video and uh, keep applying it to their spotted horse because it's an older horse. And if they just take it home, turn it back in the pasture, he's going to get hard mouth and everything's going to go back the way it was. You know, we, we're not miracle workers. While the horse is here, we get them doing all kinds of things. And it depends on temperament of the horse. They could go home and in a week, the people either got it screwed up or, you know, just let it go back to your old habits. But I can't express enough to get... I'm going to set them up. There we go. There. To get that little side pass, you know, I haven't asked, like I said, going that direction, I haven't asked of them. You know, it's all goes back to that hip, getting hip. And when I say soft to the hip, I mean when I put my leg on there and I look at that hip, they're moving that hip. Now if I roll my spur, he moves a little faster. But if I just put light pressure, I expect him to move softly with it. And that's why, you know, I preach about it all the time. It can save y'all so much trouble. Just learn how to, to do that. I mean, your horse better for it and you'll get more control. And on the trail, you know, me and Cindy to verify this. You know, I'm out there. I'm usually schooling a horse while I'm out there. I don't just get brain dead. I don't want my horses to be brain dead. Yeah, so this boy is a character. When Ray's riding him, I just, I gotta get back here because if he's doing these poles behind me if Charlie cut, hits that pole and he sees me he's saying Ray I don't care I'm going to David so, so I gotta make that smile but you know here's y'all see how quiet he, he is and that's what we're striving for we're after a real quiet smooth riding horse you know and if anybody's looking for an illusion stud to breed to I'm telling you, he's the one, because I really liked, he showed me a lot. You know, he's got a good mind on him. He's got nice gates on him. He's type of horse, especially when he hits about seven. I, we'd be able to do anything with him. Everything from, of course, raining for Andalusian is not as hard as it is in the quarter horse world. So he go do a raining pattern, because the stops are a little bit different. And uh, or he can be able to jump a fence. So I hope y'all get something out of this. And you know, uplifting thought for a day. People just chill out. You know, at the end of the day, what you see on 
TV or the internet, doesn't make a hoot. Focus on you and your own horse. I mean, and that's the main objective. And just take life for what it is. And sometimes I know it's hard. I can preach it, but sometimes it's hard living it. So, Miss Cindy, you got any questions? She don't have nothing at all. Nothing? Yeah. Not a one, she says. So this is cut and dry, simple. You know, like I said, if he was confirmation was that, I gotta really take that in consideration, especially with his mindset, because I don't want to blow him, his knees and his hocks out. Because I, I'm looking forward to that first loaf, because that's gonna be so pretty. Y'all probably get to see it. So, with that said, as I always say, be true to the horse, they'll be true to you. And try to be true to yourself, to my kids, grandkids, and a special person out there, Wash Day Lake. Katie, God bless, take care. Right now.